We're here in um, a place called Hurricane Creek. The creek is right over there. And the woodland up from it, uh, up to the upper slope there, is an oasis of a kind that is shrinking and becoming harder to find in a state like Alabama. Um, it's an old growth forest. It's been degraded a little bit, but there's some magnificent trees left here of the kind that once covered all of old Alabama. That's a longleaf pine. Longleaf pine used to cover a large part of the southeastern United States. The first Spanish explorers coming up from Florida walked through mile after mile of longleaf pine. The natives uh, the, na the Indians used to uh, burn through large areas and they kept it as a, uh, a natural environment. But there were also very extensive areas of hardwood, like this uh, big leaf magnolia that I have also next to me here. And what's important about this is that uh, this is the site of the reservoir of the biodiversity the fauna and flora of a state like Alabama. It's the richest in the United States uh, of a, uh, in fauna and flora, this state and the immediate surrounding states. In the streams of Alabama, 350 species of fishes still existing. Some of them are extinct, however, and some are a lot are endangered. Largest numbers of salamanders uh, found anywhere in the world, the largest number, uh, not just in Alabama, but in Alabama and the immediate surrounding area, including the Smoky Mountains. Uh, largest number of crayfish here, any place in the world. Uh, largest number of mollusks, freshwater mollusks of almost any place in the world. So this is a fabulously rich region of the United States that's approached uh, only in uh, Asia, Eastern Asia, along the Tibetan Plateau and China and, and, and India. Uh, you have to go all the way around the world to find anything as rich as this for the cool temperate zone. You look over the state of Alabama, and the same is true of the other southeastern states, and you can, if you look at it from the air, it looks like it's got a lot of forest, but that's not true. What you're seeing is not really forest. You're seeing pine plantation, loblolly pine. You're seeing the equivalent of cornfields and cotton fields. I mean, they're managed, and they contain generally only one kind of tree, and you go into them, and you can't find this amazing diversity. You won't find the reptiles and the birds and the insects and so on. They're not forest. A real forest is a naturally growing system of trees that occur fairly close together and have with them uh, the great faunas and floras that characterize uh, the region and that particular flora, trees and other vegetation, uh, in a natural condition and has for, in cases like this, into hundreds of thousands of years. So Hurricane Creek is an oasis for people. It's also a reserve for a natural resource that people ought to consider as valuable to them in the long run as their own culture and language and history. Because this is part of history. This is ought to be thought of as part of not just the land, but of the whole, the whole environment, the spirit of the people. Uh, a lot has to be done in the southeast, which is surprisingly neglected considering the luxuriance of the plants and animals that live here. We need to get much more scientific research done. Just heard a pileated woodpecker calling above me. Uh, we need a lot more research done on what is here, all the different kinds of organisms. There are new species or undescribed species of plants and area and, and animals, particularly insects, for example, uh, in an area like this. Uh, we need a thorough map of uh, the different uh, kinds of uh, habitats like this one to know exactly where they are, what their condition is. 
And we need to be able to use those maps in connection with the detailed maps of the agriculture, the tree plantations, routes of uh, transportation, the waste management sites, the habitations, the plain places of employment and industry, and put it all together and make a plan for a region like this that uh, allows economic growth, optimizes economic growth. In fact, you can get better economic growth if you have that kind of information for the long term, and at the same time allows the preservation and even restoration of beautiful spots like this one. Today, you have to hunt all over the place. You have to have special knowledge and people who know where these places are to get to them for the most part. And that shouldn't be. These should be considered the treasure sites uh, of uh, the state and uh, maintained and restored and uh, valued as much as any other real estate in uh, the area. Very little of the conservation effort for places like Hurricane Creek uh, can be pulled off by small groups of scientists who study it, even though they may be learning increasingly in detail what's here and how the ecosystem works. What it, what it takes to save it and to use it and treasure it, of course, is everybody at the public. And right now, uh, all of the public involvement that we can get in saving places like this uh, is going to pay off handsomely. And fortunately, there is a group, growing group of dedicated conservation uh, workers, people who do it on their own time. Uh, spare time, raising money in small organizations, uh, they're in the trenches. I like to call them the thin green line that's, that's holding on to some of the most precious habitats until the rest of the public wakes up. People can do a lot of good by supporting local conservation initiatives, getting behind them. It doesn't take an awful lot. They are going to be the beneficiaries. They're the ones that are going to be able to visit these marvelous places and take their children there. Universities and colleges ought to be heavily involved because this is where you teach ecology and where you can introduce students to science in an exciting, direct, hands-on way. And the scientific benefits of studying natural environment, uh, environments like this are almost limitless in the new kinds of medicines that might be discovered in the principles of ecology. We need to have a sustainable environment. All these considerations should come in to be part of the public consciousness and part of the political process too. Another way most people can assist in developing a healthy environment and restoring a natural environment is to pay attention to what their legislators think and do and let their vote count. Aren't you? What? You like coming home back to Alabama? Sure. I like coming home. Alabama is home. I, uh, I've been up at Harvard University uh, for 40 odd years. I was born and raised in Alabama. But the way I put it is that uh, I'm not a New Englander who was born and raised in Alabama. I'm an Alabamian who happens to live up in New England. But certainly, this is what I consider to be uh, the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs>